Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Whiskey, Web, and Whatnot. I'm your host, Charles William Carpenter III, and my special guest co-host today is Adam, what's your last name? Schmargyle. 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 He's a Smurf. <laughs> anyway, our uh, guests today are Damian Edwards and David Fowler. For those who don't know who you are and what you do, uh, I guess we'll start with David. Tell us about yourself. Oh, awesome. David Fowler, I'm from Barbados originally, if you don't know where that is. Land of Rihanna. Oh, yeah. We called it the Land of Rihanna. Yeah. That's a Fun good fact. export. Fun fact. Same school, same time, me and her, two years apart. Wow. So I'm famous by association, just, just <laughs> yeah, in case you're yeah. wondering. You're, you're famous adjacent. Adjacent. Mm. Close enough. Right? He's been promising Rihanna would come to his birthday party <laughs> the entire time I've known but him. But hold on. It's yet to happen. When it happens... Mm. Gonna be epic. I don't know when it's gonna pay happen, off, but when it happens, she's yeah. been busy. <laughs> like you were putting notes in the locker, trying to say hi. You know? <laughs> Definitely was. Definitely not. Been at Microsoft for 15 years. For 15 years this year. Holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. Um, only job I've ever had from oh. college. So I interned for two years, and then I've been there the whole time, working mostly on .NET frameworks, platforms, servers, a ton of different things. So. No, I'm a distinguished engineer at Microsoft. Very nice. Pretty, pretty happy about that. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I do. Wham. Sick. Damien. Yeah, so I'm the old man of this duo. Like, <laughs> I did not, I've did. i worked at Microsoft for a little less, 13, 13, 14 years. So I came just after Fowler. We actually met the year before I joined because I came to a conference at Microsoft, went to meet uh, one of the product owners and said, I've got this problem with my code. And he said, just wait a second. And he, like, trotted the dev in, like the SDE2, like yeah. the, the junior dev, and it was Fowler, <laughs> and I didn't know him from a bar of soap, and he fixed my code, and then fast forward five years, and then we, we met again in the hallways, and we were both working there. So yeah, uh, but before that, I was in Australia, that's where I'm from originally, although I grew up in England as well, and I've been working with .NET since the very beginning, so like 24 years now, yeah. but as a customer, before I joined Microsoft, I was a dev, and before that, I was in IT, so yeah, I've been working in... With the web since the very beginning, like since the early to mid '90s. So since GeoCities, I've seen it all. Yeah, <laughs> he created GeoCities under yeah. construction. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I had under construction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, GIFs Bl- on nice. my uh, and I pronounce it GIF. So there you go. You, uh, the right way. The right way. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, like the peanut butter. So now, but now I work with Fowler uh, with .NET. So yeah, I was so lucky to like grow up with the web. You saw it when it was just kind of yeah. basic and here we are chopping things up into the smallest pieces that have ever been that we're, we're shipping them across the globe into yeah. the smallest edge nodes that have ever existed every html um, file to a different server micro html right mm. but yeah. all together the app it. is now 472 <laughs> megabytes being delivered to your browser so yeah. <laughs> that's the client's problem that's the client's problem <laughs> all righty so before we get too serious yes. let's talk a little about whiskey wow. while you're really here because i bribed you <laughs> so today we're having the Akashi White Oak Malton Grain. It is aged a total of five years, so it's three years in used bourbon barrels, and then two more in Mizerna, Mizanara, I can't say this right. And someone Mizanara cask? Miz, yeah, Mizanara. Yeah. Oh. I think that's it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you. See, words, words are a, hard. It's brilliant. brilliant. Look at the Whoa. things. Whoa. That this is oh, I see, I wow. see. Who's so this is, they, it <laughs> is distilled in the Scotch style, but it is a blended whiskey, so... Couldn't get a specific mash bill, but apparently there's rumors of rye and some other things, not just malt. It is 80 proof, so only 40%, David. You'll be fine. It's a lightweight one. Yeah, yeah. We start you off right in the afternoon. And also, I'm, I'm going to have to add some sound effects later. Usually, I'm like popping the oh, pork, right. and I add that too. Well, it's the twist. Nice. It's nothing but the nicer ones. Yeah. That's cool. It's cracking. ASMR. ASMR. Little yeah. 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 Opening the whiskey. Yeah. Very uh, yeah. Now whiskey we have to finish it. Looks like I broke the lid. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pass around some of the pouring there. Adam I have not, I have not had that. this one. Yeah, I hadn't either. Like I've I had a few, a few Japanese. Nice. There you go. ASMR. Yeah, there you go. It is very, like, Thank you. people us- usually think we add in these sound effects. but actually, No, we no. can we can vouch. Yeah. You're literally holding it up. Yeah, the yeah. I've always wanted to be a Foley artist. So I don't know what that is. Me neither. It's the group of people in films that add all the sound effects, oh. and they do it through other oh, weird, yeah. Right. weird yeah. means. Yeah, I know. It's not just the Axel's last name in Beverly Hills Cop. It is actually a, a job. <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> no, yeah. That dude is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, the first good. thing they always, the sound they always make is. Who's the 
Police Academy. The guy that's all the yeah, effects. Steve Gutenberg. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, nice. yeah, 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 that guy. He's a, an amazing Foley it's artist. Incredible. All right, so first we're gonna take a little sniff Smell. of this. Yeah, yeah. We start with a sniff, and we have a very highly advanced rating system. <laughs> it is from zero to eight tentacles. Eight tentacles is so the the logo or the mascot for the pad, podcast is an octopus, mm. and then we're engineers, so we're index based. We give them an extra one there. Like so it. zero is terrible. I don't want this anymore. Four is middle of the road, not so bad, but eh. And eight is clear the shelves. Give me nothing else. This is amazing. Okay. Yeah. So give it a sniff and go from there. Cherry, dandelion. I'm getting vanilla. It's very light. Ooh, yes, I was it's gonna not, say. Not 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 any fuel or anything like that going on. Tastes yeah. like very light. I get a light vanilla and yep. a little something fruity though. And you could probably just say dried apricots. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my catchphrase for you know it's a catch all really of Got like it. I don't know what this smells like. It's fruity. It's I don't know. And if it's bitter, it ends up being like an orange rind or something. In it's that always got to be charcoal leather. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shoes. It's not bitter. Some type of flour. Mm -hmm. It is like no. It's quite. Oh, it's sweet. got some sweetness. Fruity. It's yeah. kind of sweet, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's almost like syrupy in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I I noticed that at the end more than I did at the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting that initially, like mm. a little bit of thickness in the and tongue a, and a mouth coat. But like I'm still feeling. I haven't. Yeah, you know, it's been twenty, 20 seconds now, and it's, uh, I can't talk. I've had one sip. There might no, be when, I was <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I was like what twelve or something mm. at a party, with my family. There were drinks in the fridge, and one was mine, and one was not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I grabbed the one I thought was mine, yeah. and I drank it, and I had this like burning sensation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, "What is this thing?" And I just had the same, the same feeling. It's the same feeling <laughs> right now <laughs> from my childhood. Taste memory. Taste yeah, memory is yeah, totally real. You got memory. smell memory, taste memory. Yeah, very nice. So what know. you're saying is it's not smooth going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do not like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I am. I do not like that. Yeah. I oh, find well. that very drinkable. Mm-hmm. It is. It does have it's a little right? of a burn going down. Like there's obviously much smoother. Doesn't it all burn? It no, do, it does all burn. No. Well, I mean, some burn more. An 80 yeah. proof for me, and usually 90 and below, will be pretty smooth. I mean, unless it's maybe a rye, will have a little spice or mm. something to kind of remind me or a warming there. But we, I call it the hug, kind of like the hug of the whiskey as it's coming down. It's giving me a little see. inside hug. But this one. It's pretty mild. It's a but mild hug. This is warming. Yeah. It's not. Oh. Yeah. I would call it warming. Right? This is yeah. a, a muckluck for your tongue. <laughs> exactly. Oh, thank you for the giggle. I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it. It's it's a courtesy laugh. But a <laughs> pity laugh. I think right. Right. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Whack. I'm <laughs> laughing <laughs> at you, not with you. It's, <laughs> it's quite different. But yeah, no, this is like almost refreshing, which is weird for a Japanese whiskey for me. Mm. I'm always prepared to have, like, they are smooth like very clean feeling but i'm always prepared to have s more smoke or more peat this is a very light peat like on the finish for yep. me a, l a, a little bit or a little peat there so peat? i'm kidding you know <laughs> who is he <laughs> pistol <laughs> peat you know <laughs> that <laughs> basketball player who was really no, he's, no, no. he's on the puns also he yeah, is on the exactly pun train. you're in it well, for that, I'm going to definitely make you go second in the ratings. <laughs> so for me, and I've had so many of these because I'm uh, a crazy alcoholic. And uh, <laughs> so I compartmentalize my ratings <laughs> by category. But you can say mm -hmm. any spirit or any whiskey. You don't really drink whiskey, so yeah. you probably can't say, oh, well, compared to other whiskeys I've had. But in general, like across spirits, maybe do something like that. I'm going to say across Japanese whiskeys, it is like... I mean, the price point super approachable. Yeah. I think it was like 50 bucks, maybe. Like, I think it's even cheaper. It might be even it. cheaper. I mean, yeah. it depends what state, obviously. I was going to get a nicer one, and then I looked you guys up online. And I was oh, like, well, I better save that, that, <laughs> that but for also someone else. But Washington <laughs> State, I think, has more tax on this than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Oh, in interesting. So. Yeah, plus I went to a, like a city liquor store, so yeah. it might have been a little more versus like Total Wine. Yep. But so in that range, yeah, it's quite flavorful. It's smooth. I would definitely have this again. I I, I find it slightly refreshing. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a seven for me. It's actually for a Japanese whiskey specifically. I unless I want like a heavy hitter, like I want a Nika. I I know I want a Habiki, like Smoke mm -hmm. Bomb or something like that. I would I would actually like go more this direction, especially we're coming into warmer months and stuff. So maybe I'm skewed by that. But <laughs> yeah, it's a seven for me. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. What do you seven. think, David? Seven. Seven. That's the As magic number. It's like seven minute abs. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> that's nothing. <a> <laughs> it is. Send me it. Now he's interested. Yes. Abs in yes. seven minutes? Seven minutes. That's all you need. Yeah. Become a dev in seven minutes. Wait till he gets this joke yeah. from, I think it's from something about Mary or something like that, right? Yeah. Anyway. 
I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. As a non-whiskey drinker, yeah, it didn't completely destroy my chest. Uh-huh. The hug felt like not super bad. It's not smoky. Not really. It's smooth. No. Not yeah. Five. 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 Yeah. Like would have again. Wouldn't necessarily seek it out. But yeah, like, if it was not on bad. This podcast again. Yeah. Or yeah. at Damien's house. We'll see. Yeah. With the whiskey I have I'm nothing this lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> it's light, right? Oh, it's very, very, yeah, very, yeah, very light. It, very it feels light. light. It feels easy to drink. Yeah. 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 It's like it's like Fisher Price, my first Japanese whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> For you. It's Fisher Price. That makes sense. It's, yeah. tra- it's training wheels. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to buy some. You should. <laughs> you live here? Yeah. Okay. Is there well, a, well, like a, a light? Is there a lighter version? Is there like a mega light where there's no burn? There are like, lighter whiskeys. Really? Sure. There are. You more yeah. floral. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Irish whiskeys might be a good choice Irish? for you. Yeah. Irish whiskeys tend That's to true. be quite a bit Talk lighter. Talk to Barry about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Start. Irish so you start off. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, we'll we'll help you out. We'll get you there. Okay. All right. Um, I feel like Damien's gonna have a lot to say. So what do you think, Adam? I find it very approachable as well. Um, I'm even getting a little juniper as it kind of continues, Ooh, which maybe that's just me having this this sensation of when I smell juniper is now resting on my tongue. It's yes. I, I happen to like juniper. Juniper. I know a lot of people hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm down. So I like it a lot. Um, it is very approachable. There's almost something juice-like to it, mm-hmm. uh, which yeah is yeah, del- yeah delightful. Like its thickness is kind of like lends itself to more of a juice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we we had some yesterday. Yesterday's not was this. very nice as well. Yeah, not the same one. We had a different one. So I'm kind of comparing it to yesterday. Sure. I'm enjoying the 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 layers on my tongue at the moment. I'm gonna. So yesterday I think I gave it like a six. Yeah. I'm thinking like a is, is almost. I was do a seven as well. I think sounds very. I wow. would like to get this again and show my friends. This is very nice. Well, okay. Yeah. That's very high. I mean, there's not there's not many places to go from there. There's just the eight. Right. That's like true. That's really. That's yeah. Like that's the really pinnacle. it. Like, is this the best? I, I, it, this could be a four for you. It's fine. Like, it's I don't definitely know not you, a four. I yeah. think I think there's a bell curve like going on here like usual, yeah. and so I think I, we'd expect to see a lot in the middle. And so I mean, I'm enjoying this very much. I I will be really snobbish and say I've seen this bottle on the shelf many many times yeah and gone that's too cheap I'm not buying that <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> nice. yeah. so my daily drinker I usually um, Japanese whiskey wise I'll usually be doing either Hibiki Harmony which unfortunately mm. has gotten a lot more expensive yeah. over the last 10 years than it used to be or a Nikka so a coffee grain or a coffee malt yeah they're the staples as well but those are a bit more like they're yeah. you know, probably twice the price yeah but this is very nice. This is really, really. I am pleasantly surprised. So I will cap. pick it up next time I see it. So yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any higher praise really than that. I mean, put I it have on a the shelf. Good yeah. whiskey collection. I probably got forty to fifty bottles, yeah. and so I'll pick that up. Yeah, no problem. So I will easily give that a six. Yeah. So just, no, will just you for not? Will you judge other cheaper whiskeys less? Yeah. Less so harsh? like, there's another one. There's what a are Japanese you learning from this experience? There's a cheap <laughs> Japanese whiskey <laughs> called Toki, which okay. is by Suntory as okay. well. And it's in a rectangular bottle. You see it everywhere. Yeah. And someone once said to me, Toki is just Japanese for whiskey. Like, that's like the, the <laughs> most <laughs> basic default. thing you it's can default, buy. Right? It is like the default. Yeah. And so, like, in America, it's sold as like, oh, a Japanese, like the entry to the premium Japanese. And he said, in Japan, that's just That's whiskey. just the well. That's yeah. just the whiskey. Uh, yeah. okay. And so I've never bought it. And uh, I don't know what it tastes like because yeah. I've been, I'm a snob. And so I, but I'm going to buy this. This is actually very, very Yeah, pleasant. I'm going to so. say this is the Buffalo Trace of Japanese whiskeys. I don't know what that is. You don't know what Buffalo Trace bourbon is? Okay. So I am not a bourbon. I'm not an American whiskey drinker. I've only recently started basically buying American malt whiskey. Okay. So yeah, we have a few good, local yeah. distilleries, which I've I bought some bottles of recently. Yeah. And then my, I've really never ever liked like rye whiskey or bourbon until recently. Okay. When someone gave me a bottle of bespoke whiskey they had made. Oh. Bourbon. Okay. They had made. The fucked one? That's the fucked one. You know what's funny? <laughs> I put that photo on Twitter. I couldn't even tell you what it was called. I totally <laughs> never <laughs> saw. I gotta look up that. I've gotta look up the photo now because you're telling me what it's called. And I, I don't literally know. Just I'm said just it. pronouncing and it. And you could have just seems. planted that in my mind. That's and I'm just going along with it. And I have yeah. no idea. So now I'm gonna find that. It was like F E U C T. And yeah, I was like, yes. we both looked at each other. We're like, is that fuck? That's a fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, fuck. that's just I, like I, a I, very I, clever <laughs> phonetic way of like saying fuck. That is it. That's literally that. Yeah. Fugged. F E U C H T. And so anyway, I took the fact that I bought I got this whiskey given to me. I was like, okay, I need to need to try drinking this. Yeah. So I'm like uh, old fashions. Yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed them when I've had them out a couple of times, but now I'm like all about the old fashions. So I've nice. got some more mixing gear at home. I'm making them for my wife and I most nights. Are you You're doing it with like a 
turbinado sugar and the so I've just I started out with just white yeah just oh, classic no, no. sugar cubes this week I for the first time I used uh, brown sugar yeah so I just like use you the want turbinado specific haven't done that yet but that's part of the fun with an old fashioned as yeah, I understand you it you can rotate the citrus yeah, you can change the sugar you can do the ratios yeah I do have an orange bitters and an angosta bit bitters yeah. so I'm doing both nice. And so that's been, Pouchards been too a lot of fun. Another, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Pouchards is another like more traditional okay. one too. I don't have that one. Yeah. And I have a new ice maker. It's probably sitting on my clear, doorstep at home waiting for me. Clear ice balls. Clear right? ice. So I've got a uh, current, like just a tray that I'm using, but I've got one that makes more. So yeah, yeah. You, you are also an alcoholic. This, this is, is classic Damien. D just like, just so you know. Yeah. This nerding out on something is yeah. what he does. I don't yeah. do anything lightly. That's there's what my wife said. There's no lightly. What, you're into it? It's like, you're into it. Like Damien, I want TV. It's like, okay, here you go. Yeah. Detail, detail. Got all the details for you. Here. Spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good friend to have, though, especially if he's going to like do the deep dive, and you're like, well, I know it's going to work out. Pick one of these three. He does it first. Fine. Then I'm like, Damien, tell me what, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. What do I do? Well, I think <laughs> your chair, your desk, your monitors, your computer I built for you, your monitor arms, your microphone, your, yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so that's awesome. Quite a, quite a pair. Up. Quite a pair. <laughs> I like it. We are going to move into a few hot takes. Mm. I'm going to make them up on the fly a little bit. I mean, you can look at the list and pick one, but we discussed some before, too. Be before we started recording, there was a mention of micro HTMLs and all of that. Here's a question for you, David. Yeah. Is HTML a programming language? <laughs> oh, 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 snap! <laughs> if you were talking to David <laughs> in 2008, he yep. would have scoffed at you. Yep. <laughs> programming language like HTML <laughs> of course what a not. joke it's a markup language and then you get all pedantic right yep no I'm like I don't care <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of where no, I go like, with it too yeah, just, okay just remember that bell curve we talked about before <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. used to care a lot about like it being like correct mm -hmm. like yeah you are not correct like oh. it, is, it is a markup language mm. like, what are you talking about it's not like, yeah. No, yeah. I'm like cool. Oh, so you don't care about semantic HTML though. See, back in the uh, back in my little train. dalliance oh with my .NET, it was the web forms days, and getting like pages that were just div 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 drove me nuts. Kyle, I can tell you a story Table. about me before I worked at Microsoft. But when he first came across me to do with semantic HTML and web forms, yeah, he was loud. Yeah, I was loud. So mm -hmm. I was one of those. People do it right in the ASP.NET community. Yeah, who cared about XHTML 1.1? Who nice. cared about doc types? Yeah, to be who right. cared about. And so me and oh another gosh. another guy. You read them. the books. Yeah. So we we <laughs> came to like the feedback group of oh, the, the team. <laughs> and they were like, so anyone got any feedback? And me and Tatham, the only feedback we had was like, fix the HTML rendering of ASP.NET because it's not compliant. And, a da -da 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 -da. and we were like really into it at that point in time. Yeah. 2008. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think that's a similar time. It was like the precipice of MVC conversions, or at least where I was working yeah. at yep. the time. Yeah. Well, it was also on that precipice of like IE7 going to 8 and CSS 2.1 oh compliance. Gosh. And we'd just come out of like IE hadn't revved in seven years. <laughs> and uh. it was the one everyone used. And I then think that's Chrome what I appeared and the world changed. All right? the good yeah. stuff Microsoft has been doing for a while, I appreciate. But I don't forgive them for IE6 for quite some time. Whoa. So. Because it was so successful? <sighs> yes, because it was so <laughs> successful. <laughs> and it's fucked up so much of my time during. I, like, I hear like you. You want a hot take? You I want hear a hot you. take? I'll Ooh, take one. Yeah. Safari is the new i6. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's, it's, so it's that's not it's hot. hot. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> even yeah. know that was the case. Yeah. We, we built this new dashboard like, for the thing that they were working on, Aspire, the, the shirts we were wearing. Yeah. And it was all good. We were like in the last few previews. Yeah. And then the bugs came in. And I was like, huh? There's mm -hmm. still specific browser bugs in like, yeah. 2024 Oof. on Safari. I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> You're like, fuck those Mac people. <laughs> Which is unfortunate because at least on a Mac you can install another browser. Yeah, yeah. But if you're on an iPad yeah. or an iPhone. Good point. You can still install another browser. It's the same no, engine. It's, yeah. still, it's still Safari. Almost nobody yeah. knows oh, mobile this. Safari. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of forked though. Different. Yeah. Is it really? Is yeah. It yeah. yeah, even mobile Safari is different from desktop yeah. Safari. Is it worse it than is. desktop Safari? It, it is. Oh, okay. It well, is a little behind. It. It's a little behind. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Right. So there you go. Well, that, anyway, that was one hot take. You want to know? Uh, yeah, what's uh, so we've got all these JavaScript package managers, and how much do you laugh at them when you're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've been around. You all can do that all day. So, so what do you make fun of when you're like a new package manager in JavaScript? What Deno the or F, Like, what do you? Yeah, what what goes through your mind when you see that? 
Um, I'm glad we're not trying to integrate with those anymore because <laughs> we went through a time where we did try and meet the customer where they were. We need to build grunt support. We need to build oh. gulp support. We need oh, to have hey, Bower. Cool. The first one we did was Bower support. <laughs> And yeah. then that bird fell off the branch mm. two weeks later. <laughs> we, got we were left holding the babies. We got like, burned hard. We got burned so yeah. hard. And we lit we just pulled the ripcord and said we're not doing that shit ever again. We yeah. tooled we tooled Bower, then we tooled Grunt. And while we were doing Gulp Grunt, came Gulp out, Gulp came Gulp out. Gulp died. And yeah. it was like literally what? in weeks. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're like so no webpack for you, I guess. Which has come and gone as I understand. Kind it? of. I mean it's yeah. hot garbage. Is it, is, is it Veet or Vite? It's, it's the French word, so it's Vite. You know, yeah. it's funny. So I first saw it, right? And I was Vite like, is wait, pretty wait, good, actually. Wait, hold on. Is Webpack dead now? I, I, lo yeah. I love JavaScript. I don't, <laughs> I don't care if it's dead or not. It's dead to me. Because I, I like saying Vite. It is super fast. Mm. I actually kind of like Bun, too, but I'm tired of changing all the but time. But is it faster than a turbo pack? Uh, Brandon Rust? Hey, we don't, we don't fuck with them. <laughs> okay? not, but those whose name may not be mentioned. Da -na -na -na. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the Zelda thing or something. It is. Anyway, it is. yes, yeah. yes. Oh, so we just gave them a logo idea, damn it, dude. Uh, Zelda's definitely going to lift up the triangle soon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. Yeah. In all black. Get your Everybody piece. wears yeah. all black. Matte black. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, matte black, everything. It's very Jay-Z of you. Um, <laughs> so what? here's a hot take. Yeah. Like... I mean, is .NET full stack fully relevant in these days where I can just use Next.js and write my whole application? Let me get on the table. Let me stand up. On I, mean, on, I on know the high you horse. have a lot to say about this. I have the more level, yeah, even headed I'm gonna go with answer, this. and then you can go for I the... I, I know when I want to unlock the rants and so not. Look, I genuinely believe there's space in our industry for what we have now and 100 times more. I love the fact that we keep inventing shit like every year. There's new stuff that comes out and we don't deprecate anything. Anything <laughs> you could ever think of is still being used by some poor sap somewhere or someone who really thoroughly enjoys it and will argue about it. Right. So we just keep adding stuff, which is fine. I think that's just kind of what our industry is about. You just keep adding new stuff. Yeah. And then of course, when you step back for a moment or you've been in the industry, you're lucky enough to be in it for a couple of decades like I have, you start to see patterns, you start yeah. to see cycles. And you can get a little cynical. It's like, well, we were doing that 24 years ago. It was just called this. But that's fine, like because new people discover stuff. But I will say the one thing I do find difficult is when new folks come and they say, Damien, you seem to know a little bit about blah, blah, blah. How did you learn? Can you tell me how to, with, with the implication being, how do I get? It's like your level, like, I hate to tell you, do you have 25 years to wait? It's like, that because I didn't read a book. I didn't do a course. I lived through the beginning of the internet. I lived through the browser wars. I battled with all that stuff and I read stuff like anyone, tried a few things and ignored. There's far more I've ever ignored than I ever used or knew yeah. about. And so I don't envy being new in this industry now because it just snowballs. It's not simpler than it was 40 years ago because we no. invented something. There's just more layers and more stuff yeah. for you to know. So that's unfortunate, but I think that's just kind of the, the devil of the industry we work in. Yeah. Tell them what you think. What? Sure. <laughs> feel free. Damien is so level-headed and is so reasonable about all this stuff. So your, your question was about, is Donet still relevant in, in 2024? Yeah, compared to like now that Next.js and there's ne like Next .js all is these the, frameworks. Is the full stack app as long as you include auth and mailers and <laughs> webhooks <laughs> and 50 other libraries. So relevancy, I would say yes. Yes, overall. These new frameworks... I think they all push the envelope going forward. So everyone will reinvent something, like, 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 like Damien said, and there'll be small innovations because mm -hmm. there'll be some new enhancement and some new feature. So it's the same overall feature, yep. server-side rendering. Like, when that post happened, <laughs> like we were just in the office just going like, is this a, is this a prank? Is this a joke? This, this can't be real, <laughs> right? But I mean, it's not exactly the same. There's, there's a lot of innovations, yeah. like s tiny things that you don't see if you're just like zooming out and going, I'm cynical. I did PHP like 20 years ago, and it's been the, it, it was the same thing. So I think yeah. we appreciate what those frameworks do from like a .NET framework person kind of point of view. I think people don't know what's there because of our history. Like mm -hmm. the new .NET is just not the same as the old .NET. And Damien actually took a Next.js a Next app and ran it in our performance benchmark. And it was abysmal. All right, <laughs> the, the, the perf was not even. It was it even close to being reasonable? Yeah. What we would consider like a fast, reasonable framework. Yeah. But that message does not get out. Like it's really hard for people to kind of see past 
Well. The fluff of, oh, this is like super old and crusty and my dad used it. And it's like, no, 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 our new thing is super lean and this Next.js thing is like bloated and slow. <laughs> right. No offense, Next.js people, but offense. It's probably yeah. better th than when I did it well, a year ago. But yeah. At yeah, least from a, yeah, like a PR perspective, they come out and say, well, like the benchmarks need to be within particular constraints. Yeah. yeah. There's like, yep. you know, ABC thing. It has to be apples to apples. So yep. you're doing this and this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you so also said the magic word. You said PR. They are very good. Oh, at yeah. the PR. In fact, mm. you know, internally Amazing. when that conf happened, we had managers like saying to us, like, why are they so much better at this than <laughs> we are? <laughs> and it's not and I think the the, the real the real answer is that well we don't see ourselves like they do. Right. Like we are .NET within developer division at Microsoft at Microsoft. But we are a team within a bigger team within another team that works with other teams. Like we're right. not part of the Microsoft machine. No. As much as everyone just kind of says, well, anything from Microsoft is painted with the same brush. It's mm. not really how it works internally. Yeah. So we're not, we're not really out there trying to market ourselves as a thing like any new thing like Next.js. Yeah. We don't have... Oh, we, it's funny. I was about to say, we don't have .NET Comp. We do have .NET <laughs> Comp, actually. We have a conference. We have a conference. It's fantastic. Conference. But... It, 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 there's something different about how we do those things. Like yeah. We don't have... We, Next.js is a company, effectively, that was now owned by Vessel and all the rest of it. And, you know, they have their goals, which is all fantastic. That's what businesses should have. Um, but we kind of just, I think, operate differently. We don't go out there to compete with Next.js or right. compete with PH or even compete with Java. You don't see us doing blog posts about, like, oh, we're this better than XYZ because, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we could. I, I was going to say, I'd <laughs> argue you kind of need a DHH that's kind of out there. and You could do that. I got a lot of followers on Twitter. I could, I could just tweet some spicy. We have you do have a, a lot we have of followers. We have a Mr. Rogers, tweet some We have, we have Hanselman. Yeah, yeah. Hanselman and, and you, me. You have to get that view that he has, though. Every time he takes a picture of his desk, like at his, <laughs> his like main house, by the way, and it's just like this beautiful expanse. And then his other house also kind of has that set up. So. DHH says some spicy stuff. Yeah. I watched a podcast with him wrong, recently, though. right? And I was like, he, his takes are more level than I think they come off on, yeah. on in his blogs or his rants that mm. he has on, on Twitter and stuff. I th it's funny. I saw a lot of the thing that Damien said and what DHA says, like the, the whole no build. Oh yeah, like yeah. Movement, yeah. like it. It seems if you zoom out, right? We have made front end dev so complex. Yeah. And all the tools from back end are now for front end dev too. And it's like people accept that it's this is just how it is. Yeah. And I think when you when you want to build something new or if, or, if, or if you want to do something innov innovative, you kind of have to go against the grain, right? Agreed. And people will call you crazy. People will say like, yeah. Everyone's doing this. Why Why are you not using the industry standard? The best hot take I have is industry standard is just an alternative for saying what everyone happens to be doing at the moment. Yeah, right? yeah. Not to say that, that, that it's not... Mainstream. Like, no, yeah. Yeah, um, it, yeah it's, it's, it's mainstream. It's sometimes fashion. Mm. It's not all... Hype. It's not saying that it's no. not all hype. Like, people learn these systems and you can transfer knowledge and if you want to move to places. Like, there's value. Yeah. But to think that it's, it's right or wrong yeah. is, I think, where developers get stuck. Yeah. This is the right way of doing things. It's like, no, 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 that's the way you're doing it now. Like, do you I think that's part of the kind of, we're going to get really spicy? Let's get really spicy. Let's do you think do that's it. part of like the software developer slash engineer's identity crisis? Where Absolutely. We've, we've been yeah. trying to be a profession, air quotes, yeah. ever since the inception of software development. And we look at our... We're not real engineers. <laughs> we're not real engineers. <laughs> that's, that's, the yeah. that's the reality. That's and so the we try to create the rigor. We create, the, you know, there are societies and stuff. And, and I have nothing against any of those things. I actually think standards and trying to move language forward and agree on things. I mean, that's all goodness. It doesn't, it, it, we shouldn't take away with that. But I, there is something different about material science and then you know, building a bridge, knowing that the tensional strength of this thing and the you know, brittle, I can take this great of steel and do that with it. And there's like a whole profession around that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. software is like, I read this book and it was really good. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm going to do that and yeah. I'm going to believe it wholeheartedly that and then I'm going to argue invented. It. Right. Well, well he lived through I the dark. I, I, I was gonna say, I was, say, was gonna say, I was gonna say clean, clean architecture. Clean architecture. Probably the biggest meme, like, the, the thing that I, I think is always funny, like, cause Devs love to have like the right way of doing things. Solid yeah. principles. I remember, I remember, you know, fifteen year career. Yeah. Just watching this whole wave be created and watching people talk about, you know, when you interview a software dev, like, what should they know? Solid principles. And I'm like, what is this thing? And that's just one way of thinking. And it's like, like you said, it's the loudest people who have the most you pervasive must do opinions. It this way, right? And then in your bubble, that happens to be the loudest voice. So you're exactly. like, you're right. Or oh, I write JavaScript, so this person must be. Or, or it I worked like, for you. 
yeah. whatever reason it, for it resonated you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because we're humans and we're squishy. And so now everyone does it that way. It's so yeah. funny, though, because I got into this profession. Like, I took a, a, a weird path along, and I chose code because it was – there was a – billion different ways to skin a cat and mm. i could get creative yes yeah. but it was always about outcomes who cares how i got there as long as the outcomes were what were expected and that's what i loved about it but now it's like you're, you're an idiot if you don't do this oh i'm, I'm sure i'm horrible compared <laughs> to, to a lot of people it's like i'm not the smartest person in the room i never try to be uh i might be the loudest one sometimes but i'm talking about whiskey anyway so you know what i mean like but yeah. it's fun. But that's the fun part of it mm. is like pick away, let me get creative, and yeah, maybe there's some jank in there. But so yeah, you know, I, I got a craftsman versus professional thing. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, the more of a craftsman. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm a carpenter. I you know like. I want to figure it out and get in there and find some tools. You go to Home Depot and you pick the best tools. Uh, <laughs> and this clown is trying to use his hand to like break yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah. I pick where we need the hammer to a different type of tool. Yeah, and you go, oh my gosh, like a Japanese. W carpentry tools, which are very different from Western carpentry tools, right. which are different from some other cultures. And, oh, wow, my toolbox is a bit bigger now. Yeah. Or you might go, I don't need that. I'm perfectly fine doing what I am. And that's okay. You don't have to really argue about it's it. Evolution. No. It's yeah. evolution. But some people like to argue about it, and that's fine. Like, debate's fine. It's tabs, healthy. Tabs, spaces. tabs, spaces. Well, a lot of people are, like, obsessed with spaces the right sure. way. They're so right. intent on the right ways because they, they want to skip ahead. So a lot of people, as they're learning and as they're growing, they want to know how to get there now. Th and so it's an, yes. imp it's an impatience. And yeah. it's they want to look good, and they well they also want to make something good. So mm. a lot of it's born out of like healthy ideals. But the problem is yes. is that when we uh, have had a long time in the web or a, a long time building things, you acquire so much along the way that's valuable beyond what was the right way. You discovered I was telling them on the way over here. I was like, you the more you know about what was wrong, guides you towards the right thing. Mm. And so I feel like a senior a distinguished engineer has probably screwed up more things than me. By screwing up more things, he now has more ideas of what is right and ways to wiggle within the rightness. Uh, and it's just kind of and nice maybe up. it's not even right or wrong. It's just I have a better understanding of how to make trade-offs. Trade-offs. Yeah, yeah trade-off management. That's an, yeah, senior trade developers yeah. are trade-off management. Right. It's, yeah. well, it's exactly right. And yeah. that's exactly, the more experienced you are is literally, typically, I can just see the trade-offs I'm going to have to make two steps ahead of someone who isn't maybe slight as experienced as, as, as I might be. Yep. And that comes up time and time again. How did you know? Well, I've been here before. Or I've seen this pattern before. Even if yeah. I haven't seen this particular thing, I yeah. was able to use my experience and a bit of reasoning to maybe take a, a jump, a guess, probability, a, le a leap of faith or reasoning rather than a yep. leap of faith. And that's fine. But I think the, the thing I want to say is that I think there's space for all of those people. Like, it's not like Absolutely. everyone has to be. Yeah. Like, some people can do it as a tool, as a job, nine to five, they get paid, they do the thing and it's fine. And other people can love the craft. Yeah. And guess what? They're going to contribute a different way to the other folks. And that's fine. And I could, we shouldn't have to really care that no. much about it. But then now you have this whole new breed of um, celebrity devs, mm -hmm. really, in a way. It right? is amazing. Yeah. You have. I watch them on, <laughs> on YouTube, and I, I find it fascinating. And I, and I like... You know, and I like some of them. <laughs> I enjoy too. some of I it watch, too, and they're the entertaining, yep. and they're smart, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But it is interesting to just, you know, this is a career where mm. you get on and you stream, and you, uh, you know, you're a personality and yep. a celebrity, and like that. Also, those opinions start to become kind De facto of facto, and yeah. like, well, the stronger they, they are, this. the more popular they get. So it's like if you were to get on YouTube and have a weak held opinion about things, yeah, you wouldn't it's not do well. Go far. You have to get on there and have strong opinions. Yeah. You got to be spicy. Uh, you gotta you got to make a weird be. face too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there's no video the on thumbnail this one, matters. Guess what right. they said yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interfaces. Inter <laughs> inheritance sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Classes are garbage. <laughs> yeah. I love hooks. <laughs> oh wait, here's one of the hot take questions: Is implicit types or explicit types? Why not both? And there's a place for both of them, isn't there? No. 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 Mostly. You, you don't trust other people. This is a trust issue. <laughs> what, what's interesting is that the, the language that we use, C Sharp, C Sharp 13, which is the version under development right now, mm. literally has a new feature called like extensions everything. And it has two keywords, implicit and explicit. But it's, I think that's more di dynamic, right? It, well, that yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But it's just interesting that these concepts of like implicit and explicit when it comes to type systems, even in a strongly typed system, yep. mm -hmm. you can get into places where expression allows you to say, well, I want to extend this thing yep. with a pseudo type, but I want you to do it implicitly so that the person doesn't have to say it's that. It's yep. just the language knows that you now have these things versus you have to be explicit about it. Mm. I will say I am shocked that the languages that don't have type systems 
are still used so pervasively. I think like by professional developers. I feel like when you just get started, Python is like amazing for just like iterating and like doing yeah, yeah. notebooks and like I don't know if you'd want strong types for that like at all, right? right? But then like at scale software development, and like DHH does it. I have no idea how. I have no idea what level of experience you need to build a giant Ruby app that like works well. I mean, tests. GitHub does the same thing. I mean, that's Maybe, what everyone I says. Don't I just don't. It's Personally, very opinionated. It's all about very opinionated that. patterns. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Rails is just like, just do it this if way. If you do this, you're fine. If you just do it this way, don't get creative, follow the paths, and everything is happy at scale. We mm. can prove it, right? Mm. Like, so if you have that mentality, if you get creative, then it's like yeah, you're, the you're off the rails. Wah, wah, wah. Because ah. in yeah. .NET, people will just create interfaces. Oh, the wazoo. <laughs> abstractions <laughs> on abstractions, and we love our interfaces. Like, yeah, they oh. feel so good to write, don't oh. they? Maybe I should mm. switch to oh. C Sharp or something. I'm, I've, been, I've been thinking. I'm, I'm maturing quite a bit these days, Ooh. and I'm, I've am i been thinking about new homes, and I'm, like, sort of tired of arguing with people. Mm. And, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you you may have an opportunity to convince me. I do like Django a lot, to be you honest, do? too. Yeah. It, it's like you said. It's fun. It comes back, you know, batteries included. It's like it's like natural language, and so yeah. you're just getting shit done. Mm. I don't care about semicolons. I don't care about brackets. <laughs> like, it's just not that serious for me. So I just think it's kind of like a fun place to be, but it doesn't, you know, it's not the only game in town. I don't know. I think we should get into a little bit because I wanted to go and see your talk today, and Adam was like, "That's lame." It bro. was good. Like, let's. Shh, so I would love shh, to hear. To I would love to hear a little bit about what your talk was today, <laughs> and like kind of what Aspire was, because yeah. I'm not 100 percent clear. Like, what is the Django? What is the Rails for mm. .NET? I think it's like Blazor, Blazor. Ooh, like that. wasn't that one? Let's try and paint a picture. I guess. So one of one of the challenges of .NET as a product is it's everything, which means there's nothing, and so yeah. it actually makes it very difficult for us. So. Blazor is a UI framework mm -hmm. for building web UI. That's really what it is. It's the simplest way of saying it. Okay. Going uh, top down or bottom up? I'm just picking the random ones okay. that he said. So Blazor is a web stack. Just think of it that way. But okay. it's about UI. So yeah. it's components and it's HTML mm -hmm. and it's all that. It has bundling and all those stuff. If you things. want an analogy like Next, right? Ish, Next yeah. plus yeah. more stuff. But, but component-based rendering. Yep. Okay. And Blazor's trick was that because it's C Sharp, we can't run in the browser, and yeah. so we what we do is we compile to WebAssembly, and so we can run a WebAssembly in the browser. Yes. But like because that. it's C Sharp, it can also run on the server. So you can have a component that kind of runs in the server, but also runs in the client, or you can be so all clients. So isomorphic. Sounds familiar. So isomorphic. Before that word was even used to describe <laughs> this, we had this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that is what Blazor is. Yeah. But before we had Blazor, we had pure server-side rendering frameworks, and we've had like. 14 different versions of those ever since the inception of .NET. And I'm not even that's kidding. Good. That's healthy. you got to churn. <laughs> yeah, that's a right. Bit, a little You're bit out. Good. You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another round of layoffs for Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, no. So th we have our server, like web stack, our web server, our Node.js equivalent, I guess you could say. And I guess that's ASP.NET Core. It's built some layers. So like .NET is the big thing. The it's the big, brand. It's, yeah. A, yeah. it's the brand, right? Yeah, it doesn't right. really mean much. It's the entire brand. Oh, okay. Then there's the very bottom. There's the runtime, yep. the CLR. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that takes the like low-level IL, the bytecode, and turns it into like things that, code. things that run right on the machine. Yeah. And then on top of that, we have like, what we call frameworks, or the the base class libraries, right? The BCL, so what we call it. Standard lib is what you'd call it. In oh other yeah. Other okay. frameworks. Yeah. So yeah. that is like .NET is special because our standard lib is like huge, huge, huge. Well, it's seasoned. It's, it is. It's been challenged. It's been tested. Yes. It is delivered. And it's yeah. good. Like We have really good engineers working on the, the right. those core layers, right? On top of that, we have a set of frameworks in different areas. So if like you app frameworks. App I want to write an app. What we I call app frameworks, frameworks right? Yeah. yeah. We use the word framework super loosely. So yeah. like stack, framework, runtime is like library. It's library, like library friction. framework Platform. interchangeably, but exactly. shouldn't be. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. there is web. There is client. There's, is that just it? Web and client? Well, there's server, and there's, there's other worker, stuff. and there's right. console, and there's. So, like, if you think about those verticals, you mm -hmm. can build an app with no UI, right? Yeah. Console, terminal, app, like, that's one, one thing on top of that core base. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's, like, the server stack. On top of that server stack is the web UI, and, like, REST you can build and REST APIs, HTTP, and MVC sockets, apps. And so, ASP.NET, core, the new one, core is the web stack. Okay. That's the platform. Gotcha. So ASP.NET Core, when people say it is, you know, Next.js is the same as, as the same as ASP.NET Core, 
Uh, yes and no. ASP.NET Core just contain is the base platform, mm -hmm. and then Blazor is on top of ASP.NET Core. Gotcha. And then what else? There's an MVC, MVC framework, framework, as framework as well. on top of ASP.NET Core. Mm -hmm. So like that core layer is what you use. It's like, do you know Ruby and Rack and that yeah, same yeah. idea? So like, yeah. Node.js has a web server installed or in the base standard library, and then you can build Express on top or Koa yeah. or whatever is the new hotness for like. Uh, uh, Lessia is another um, one. Hono. 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 Yeah. Fastify. Fastify is the one written by the Node.js. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we, we keep up with the Node.js. We, we, we watch our competitors. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Oh, Very oh, closely. Oh. Well, and then you throw darts at the logos. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, we just envy that they have logos. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Blazor, ASP.NET Core, MVC, all those things. Then there's our client. UI story. Like right. like if you if you've ever used .NET, you would have known about WinForms. Like if yeah. you were if you were like an OG .NET user, at some I, point you built a Windows app. I was like OG adjacent, so I did work in tangent with other like part of the team. Yeah, mm. right? see, so I see? know that WinForms, yeah. WPF. We have a litany of like of UI stacks. Of WPF, you mean WTF? <laughs> <laughs> WCF, what is I used to call it. Yeah, <laughs> you see. And the original .NET framework, the one that is like tied to Windows, so there's like two .NETs. Okay. Mm. Don't be confused. Uh, well, I am, but it's just the box it's just got bigger. It's very simple. The <laughs> .NET framework, which is in Windows, which is built into Windows. Yep. Then there's .NET, which is not built into Windows and is separate. One simple, I update right? so that my games will play. Yes. Oh my gosh. And well, one, one I update. <laughs> that's true. That's my Windows <laughs> machine too. Or one that your <laughs> GPU driver console. Where you change the settings of your graphics card, that runs on one that's built into this. Windows. Might be the marketing mm. that we use. I know. So if you want to update your, okay, that's a pretty good. <laughs> way. That, that was that was good. That's a good you, analogy you there. So you so know what this doesn't tell me though. What? What, what is Aspire? Oh yeah. So I aspire to know. So let's go up the stack that you were drawing. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Keep going. So we're you've got there. .NET, and then you need to introduce something that isn't .NET. Mm -hmm. So you need to like talk to a Redis, or you need to talk to a Postgres, or a database, or a messaging service, or whatever it might be. Or a Node app. You've got a heterogeneous environment. I've got three APIs that are written in .NET. I've got one in Python, and I've got three Node.js apps. If I want to like run that locally, like what do you do? Well, Docker Compose. That means everything has to be in a Docker container. It means it's a big build tool chain. Or maybe I've got like some fancy PowerShell or shell scripts or whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. Or there's a litany of companies and vendors like building software to help you do this kind of. We call it the Dev in a loop. Mm. But this idea of like, how do I like just focus on my code, and then very quickly do that loop of edit the code, run the code, debug the code, write a test, that whole thing. Right? Yep. Edit right. the debug cycle. Yep. Nice. Right. And so Aspire is about, well, lots of our customers are building distributed apps. They deploy them to clouds, or they deploy them to Kubernetes. But we didn't have a .NET story for Kubernetes. We didn't have a .NET story for even the cloud, really. We didn't hmm. have like a .NET platform. And so Aspire is kind of a bunch of glue. It's like templates and tools and you know uh, some code that you use to go, well, if I've got three APIs in .NET and one in Node and three that are in Python, I've got this Docker container from another team and a Postgres over there, can I just like write code to describe that? So if you've heard of Pulumi, yep. imagine that, but focus more on just like putting my app together and then hitting run locally on my machine yeah. and have it work. Sick. Okay. So that's, that's kind of like Aspire in a nutshell. Mm. And then there's all these other bits that got to get tacked on. So we have this nice developer dashboard. So when you launch, we spit up a web-based dashboard. Hey. And it speaks open telemetry. So if all your apps egress open telemetry, which Aspire does for .NET by default, mm -hmm. then you get distributed tracing, you get structured logging, you get metrics, all by default in a dashboard. I didn't have to futz around with Prometheus or Grafana or use a vendor or any of that type of stuff. I just get it running mm. and I can see that it's working. That's nice. Which yep. is really cool. Is it fair I to say that this cooking. is somewhat agnostic to .NET, though? Also, it, like ish, ish. Yeah. Like you don't have to have a .NET application to utilize this. Not this at all. Like Correct. Microsoft providing a l another nice DX. Okay. We're good yeah. at DX. Yeah. So like the dashboard part, you can just use as a container. We ship a base container. You can like pull it. it in as long as you point OTEL at it. You can mm -hmm. see OTEL. Hmm. The composition part where you describe everything, that's in C Sharp. So that's written in .NET. Yeah. But you can compose all the stuff Anything. that isn't .NET. <laughs> you can compose a bunch yeah. of executables or Node or whatever it is that you want to compose. Yep. Nice. And we'll just launch it all. So, yeah. yeah. Other part is when you use C Sharp to model your application, dependencies, containers, environments, configuration, yeah. you can then turn that into a deployable manifest that can kind of be published to Azure or Kubernetes or AWS, AWS or anywhere else. So we basically have introduced this framework that's extensible mm -hmm. to let develop uh, that's, that's developer focus. 
where you can kind of describe application structure in .NET code, right? In the code in, that you in, would in, write in normally. C -sharp. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it kind of is a meta framework above the actual like app layers. You can just take end things and then deploy it to some some cloud or whatever. That's the extensible observability that I remember reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like yeah. Good. Yeah. It's nice. good to hear it in English, though, a little bit. You know, when you read some of these descriptions. <laughs> the marketing hey, what did yeah. I just yeah, say? Yeah, you Wasn't know, especially English? after, like, the keynotes and stuff, and there was, there was a lot of these, like, yeah. words that, like, you know, they're words, and they kind of mean something, but they kind of don't, and it's just, like, this analogous, like, everything. I, I was like, I don't know when the robots are coming to kill me. <laughs> it feels like we're getting closer. This sounds like real life. Like this is a thing yeah. I would want to do, and yeah, it's like very tangible sounding. Trying to have yeah. a, lo a local cluster and mess with things and get some of these tools is uh, a giant pain in the ass and overkill right. in, in many instances. You know, I barely have any users. Why do I need a full cluster? Like, yeah. So you hit the nail on the head. So like, I think the the beginning of this project, we actually did something in 2019. Right. It was called Tai. It was a, the first version of what Aspire eventually became, mm. and. I spent a winter learning Kubernetes, playing with it, spinning it up, trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. I was like, do I have to build a container to just run two apps? Like, mm -hmm. to like a hello yes. world running? Run a cluster? Other? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, a, like a huge rocket launcher just to kill a flight, right? <laughs> so so I you didn't fall in love with YAML? Oh, don't get me started on YAML. So like Helm YAML. charts. So I actually I don't like mind it. I think like YAML all. over JSON, first of all, there's a hot take. Yeah. Oh, I, could uh, see I, I could see that. And getting there with like, it rather than compose files and like Helm charts, I mean, having yep. like a cluster of apps in that way, it was yep. kind of fun. But yeah. Industry like, standard. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone is using yeah, it. Yeah, Cloud Native yeah. Computing Foundation stuff. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Good and that's all the cool. CNCF. And then like yeah. I took it so far and then I was like, I don't want an accidental AWS bill or something. So right. this was fun <laughs> here or fun on my little old Dell, but like fuck that from there. <laughs> so this sounds like something more approachable too without like yes. so much risk, really. Damien's favorite term is progressive disclosure. Hmm. It is how much do you have to learn to get to the point where you're trying to get to? Yeah. And can you start with a working thing? We, we say five minutes to well. Yeah. Is what, what, what we say about like building product. Mm -hmm. And then the aha moment. The aha. And you go, oh, that's why. And then you can peel the onion and go like, okay, now, I'm, now it's working. What happened? Yeah. And then you can dive into like, oh, it's, it's a container here. It's an app here. But you don't have to start with this like huge list of instructions and like learn about networking and, and subnets and clusters. And well, apps. circle back to what we were saying before about new folks entering the industry and yeah. just how much more complex stuff is now. Yeah. 25 years ago, everybody when the web was being DevOps. Right. You can't when just hand off your stuff and be like, deploy it to the server in the basement. Like that doesn't happen. When the internet I can't started, FTP shit anymore. <laughs> you know? When the internet started, it was like, well, how do I get a web page up? Well, you learn this thing called HTML. Mm -hmm. well, how do I write that? There's this thing called the HTML, hot dog HTML editor. It's yeah. like, great. Or you could just use any text notepad, which every yeah. machine had. And it was very simple to get going. Then what do I do? Well, you just like copy it. You just like take yeah, this file put it there. and you put it on your ISP server that they gave you. And <laughs> you look, it's working. The yeah. the and now 25 years later, it's like, how do I get a website going? Well, <laughs> <laughs> spit up a cluster. That's right. First download Docker <laughs> right. desktop. And Give me yeah. a credit card and 14 credentials. <laughs> oh, and my oh, gosh. SSL. Oh, no. You're describing something, though, that I measure a lot of my tools on when I'm using them. It's like, how much did I put in right. versus how much did I get back? Mm -hmm. I love that. And uh, a lot of tools, Kubernetes is a good example. I had to put a lot in before I started to see my return. I honestly feel this way about like TypeScript sometimes, where yeah. I'm like, I put yeah. a lot into TypeScript to, it, yeah. to yeah, get yeah. back pop-ups sometimes, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wow, that was a lot of work just to hint to myself yeah. about what's next on this yeah. dot, right? I'm like, I, I love that. That, that, that. So I think when we design, so we, we've been working together for super long though, right? Yeah. And we, we, we have this like, really aggressive approach to how we design stuff. So in, in the the beginning of Aspire, super early days, we had this code sample. We wrote a fake code sample. And you and worked said, backwards? Yeah. yeah. I said, oh I my said God. we want it. Like, yes, we, like, this the has code to you want to write. Oh, I love and it. I, yeah. I think I told him like last week, I said, the code hasn't changed. <laughs> it's what it looked like oh, cool. a year ago yeah. when we first wrote it in Notepad and nothing worked. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, this is like the ideal state and let's get there. Right. Yeah. And then I always talked about, like, from product design point of view, I'm always looking for that boilerplate stuff. Like, I, I actually try hard not to make a decision up front based on what I think people will want. We kind of try and build this, build the sample, build the functional thing a customer is going to build if they want to achieve that now based on what we've already built, like the building blocks. And then we look at that and you go, 
well, we could turn that into that product and that into that part of the product and that into that part of the product because this is going to be repeatable. Mm -hmm. But we try not to do that ahead of time because I look at the graveyard behind us of all the things that we tried to ship out that were going to change the world, change how programming was done and all the rest. Like, yeah, well, added all that to and it. Invent a new language. Invent a new language, invent a new stack, Oops. invent a new runtime. It's like, you know what? I'm done doing that. Like, yeah. Just let's make it easier and we'll identify the things um, that people are doing over and over again and see if we can just make this a little bit easier. So. Yeah. Yep. That totally makes sense. All right, sense. hot take. Mm. MVC or MVVM? Depends on the type of app. I think MVC is useless for UI apps, and I've said mm. that since the beginning. I think MVVM is great for stateful client stateful apps. Client apps. Ooh. And MVC is good for stateless. This is a phenomenal response. Because I've that's where it came from. <laughs> MVC was a terminal <laughs> pattern. Like, Rendered the whole thing every time, right? Right. Like I, yeah. So I went through this whole phase, right? Like, this, you know, talk about a developer's journey over 30 years. I went through that phase of reading Fowler, not your Fowler, the other Fowler. My cousin. Mm -hmm. Fowler's book, your cousin. Martin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Martin. Yeah. And which I, I, could I figured, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Huge respect for. Yeah. I, I still thought you looked up. familiar. Yeah, but like. I mean, just, just ask him. <laughs> 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 you should write a book with a similar name. That would be epic. Foul Fowler's, Fowler's Law. <laughs> 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 we can refer to Fowler's <laughs> Law. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I went through that arc. And so I remember like reading that book. And it was actually part of a college thing. I was like, oh, this is, this is what we need. This is yeah, the whole profession thing. It's like, we need to have this language we can refer to and these patterns we can identify. Mm. But then you try writing a UI app in MVC and you go, this doesn't feel great. I don't know why I'm doing this. What's the pattern for React? What's it called? Read. Re it, well, first of all, Function, React is just the UI, rendering engine. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to just yeah. be the rendering engine, right? And then yeah. hooks yeah. introduced, uh, you know, an embedded like state mini yeah. state engine per exactly. component, right? Because sagas were that bad. Mm -hmm. That's why they're like, well, how the fuck did we get here <laughs> yeah. with this? Well, like, it's like UI is a function of state. I think they tried to take a functional approach. It was a pure yeah, functional mm -hmm. approach. Yeah, it right? is. and that was. It I still was. think that's the origin of React in general. But by the time you've, you know surrounded it with enough tools to make it turn into something else, it's no longer yeah. that anymore right. in, in many cases. But I think some people point. still aspire to, to keep it that way, but uh, I know, and I'm trying not you to use it. that yeah. word. Got it. Uh, now it's <laughs> it. The marketing's working. I know, That's right? what I think. Dumb, I don't know. Dumb, dumb. You should have brought us some stickers or something. I did. Uh, cool. <laughs> we'll swap oh, stickers uh, in a uh, moment. Oh, yeah, we do want to know about the people, the people behind the code a little bit. Mm. And normally I would have like looked up more things about like sure. what you like to do or movies or whatever. You don't like drinking whiskey, no. David. So uh, what else do you do outside of you know your profession? Oh, what, are, what um, are you into? I have two kids. Okay. I'm a wife, and I'm going to have a third kid soon. That's going to be nice. my life. Making nice. people is pretty <laughs> good. reset and starting again. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, both, we both have two kids. Two yeah, yeah, yeah. but oh shop's man. closed over here, bro. Three. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going like, for three. Oh, do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be 47 I'm in a few also months. Closed, I can't fuck with I just turned 46. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I'm the oldest one here. You are. Whoa, 38. Am I the youngest? Oh, crap, I am. Aren't I? You are? No, no, I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest. 37. yeah. Well done. 87, baby. Hi. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's... So that's very time consuming. So yeah, it is. Tennis. I am an nice. avid tennis player. Nice. I still love that. Yeah. Table tennis too, or just just the big pickleball. Racket? <laughs> how many how many it's rackets can you swing? I do like tennis. Pickleball rules. It's fast paced. Pickleball is fun. Pickleball. Chase less balls pickleball. and pickleball. Can you cut this part? <laughs> I can. <laughs> Pretend you didn't say that. All right. Pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> we were going to be friends he's until like, well, that no, point. He's like, all the pickleball people are on my ball? court. He's like, okay. no one was there for years. Yeah. My, no my there. goal yeah. now is to get you to play pickleball with me and Fitz, my son. Yeah. Like, if I can get you on a pickleball court. I will. Be, I will You're gonna achieve kill, something. You're gonna. It's. It's different. I don't know. I mean, because you want to <laughs> get back for that swing, and you really got to play it like grown-up table tennis. You well, know, no, you gotta but you got to move up to the net. You got to yeah, move back. You got to plan ahead. You're always and place playing the ball. off the net and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I it's just like, different. I am like. It's not super, it either or. Super competitive. Nice. Oh, so he grunts when he serves. Is what he's saying. Oh my gosh. Like, I played in two-handed or one-handed backhand. Two-handed. Nice. I love that. That's the power. I'm like super like yeah. competitive. I can't, I can't play for fun. Things I'm gonna play join the senior tour kid. later or what? He's in. It's always doing. Honestly, well. honestly, no, no, I honestly, when I retire, move. probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good move. I'm gonna hire Dude. a coach. <laughs> my mom, my mom, who's seven, seventy something right. She just got beat by two eighty-seven year old men. And she's like competitively playing tennis right now. Wow. And she's like, I played these and they whooped us. That's my goal. That's 87 my goal. kicking That's ass. Are you serious? I love that for them. The only problem is like, no, I'm older and my brain still wants to work like I'm 20. Mm -hmm. Or like in oh, college. Oh, wow. Actually, oh, I'm right. feeling that yeah. hard. Oh, yeah. man. So I have to, so yeah. now I'm in the gym as well. 
like trying to. So you like, make decisions like, while you're playing the game, as absolutely. if you were twenty, and then your body's like, whoa. No, we're still yeah. example. No. I ran for a ball. Yep. Almost did a full split, and I was like, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tried to put my pants on, and my foot wouldn't come up. And oh, play. dude, oh. it's too much. I I threw my back out when we got a new puppy during COVID, and I went down to be like playful and threw my back out, and like oh, yeah. fell on the ground. and Was like, yeah. my God, I'm like, this is. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't and get better. And I've been injured ever here. since. No, like, it's serious. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on so socks is difficult. So <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> just turned 46. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. I'm like, get in the gym. <laughs> I'm just lucky enough. So I started late, so my kids are five and seven mm. almost eight but you know nice. so it's like they've kept me moving for maybe nice. a little longer but yeah i don't know so i think covid really like set in with like suppressing my activity like we used to oh play damn. so when we were in the office we used to play softball so we had a softball team we did. and we won the championship i really loved playing Remember softball that. i would pitch i would hit yeah you used to field in the outfield yeah, yeah, yeah. it was great fun and then COVID hit, we stopped. They demolished the campus. They demolished they our softball field. Wow. And they haven't replaced it yet. It's, it's coming. The new campus, apparently a new one is coming. And I would very much like to go back there yes. and play. But right. I haven't really no. done any activity since Piano. Then. Yeah. I a piano is not the same as playing softball. No, <laughs> no, no. Music is. Yeah, the I got a rower. Good, and I, I've used that maybe like once a month or so. Really? Yeah. Four to six. That's I really I like do. the rower. It's a great workout. Mm. Mm. It does hate short people. And oh, so you have a rower at home? Yeah, I have a rower at home. Yeah, we, you know, we did like many people. People, we set up the home gym. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife uses the Peloton, and, nice. and we have some kettlebells and free weights and stuff. So yeah, we kind of did it up. I actually put a full mirror on our yeah. wall. We had a mirror installed, and then you put like those little, L, uh, you know, LED lights you know, all around it for booty shots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> it's, it's nice of you to wear. Really His you. camera roll is full yeah, of now. Yeah. Oh, all right, <laughs> all right. So Damien. <laughs> Hearing now that you're into softball, this is probably a stupid question or whatever else. But so having lived in the UK, yeah, from Australia, yes, okay, soccer or rugby? Oh, soccer. I played soccer. I never played. I only ever played rugby in high school in England. That's the only time I've ever played it. Yeah. So growing up in Australia, you play AFL, yeah. Australian yeah. rules oh, football. Yeah, yeah. Played a lot of that. I never played on a team though. Uh. I played cricket on a team. I was a big uh, cricket guy. Yeah. And we played badminton as well yeah. as a racket Ooh, sport. That okay. I love that. I, I do love that. Fast yeah. pace. I love that. Oh, fun. man, that so is my mom yeah. not pickleball. It is not pickleball. It's very no, not. it's not. It's my faster than pickleball. It yeah. is a lot. It's very fast. My mom yeah. played competition badminton growing up. So oh, my mom cool. was very young. And so she had, she had us very young. So we would be like sitting in the bleachers in the badminton stadium. Watching her play. Watching yeah. her play. Like drinking yeah. tang. Yeah, be drinking. You know? No, we would not know. Enough <laughs> of that, but yeah. And my dad tang would play nice. yeah. indoor cricket. So my oh. dad used to play indoor cricket huh. in Australia. Uh, so okay. that was our evenings. We yeah. played cricket. So from Barbados, he's from yeah, Australia. Yeah, we played cricket. We played cricket like... I don't understand that game that much, and it's very long. It depends. There's there different, 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 different kinds of games. Yeah. I know okay. how to play croquet, but not cricket. Oh, uh, yeah. That's different. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> we, used to play, we used to play in one of our buildings oh, because yeah. it was being destroyed. I forgot. Uh, about we just started playing in the hall. Whoa. That's funny. That sounds right. awesome. We may have assisted <laughs> in partial destruction. Yeah, why not? Building. You just <laughs> helped them. That it's sounds like a great team you know? activity. <laughs> a couple of hours brought back. But we actually roped in a bunch of the American, like, younger guys on the team. To learn to play. We got them to learn to play cricket with us in the hall. That was kind of fun. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I haven't played softball for years now. My son is very eager to play softball. I'm like father, dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you, the only teams that do that are 18 and above, and he's wow. still 17. So I was going to say, they, se they sound year. 10 to so 18. Close. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So okay. my, my, my son is eight, uh, 17. My daughter is 15. Okay. Uh, so my daughter's learning to drive. My son is now driving himself to school. Oh, Whoa. That's great, though. He'll That's be up to college freedom. next year. Yeah. It's crazy. It's our last year, last calendar year with them both in the house. Wow. So we're Dang. at that phase of our life. But yeah, so I... That's kind of where I'm at. But I took up piano a couple of years ago that's as, nice. as yeah. an adult. So that's like, that's okay, permeating our yeah. house right now. I'm so really? happy. Yeah. Cool. Dude, du Duolingo has a piano learning sequence it now. It does. And it's oh. the best thing I've ever seen. I've been through three teachers. I played piano a lot back in the day. Interesting. I, and my kids, they think they're playing a video game. But, dude, <sighs> the thing is that's You're good so at gamifying things for your kids. I can't. I love this. I'm just... I, there's, the world is very fucking cool, and I want my kids to know it. And that's, you know, a, and that's a great way of saying Music it. is rad. And so... The coolest thing about the Duolingo thing is it's on the shirt. Yeah, I like yeah, the word it's rad. It's but it creates the timing. So normally a metronome would be really frustrating when you're mm. learning piano, but totally required. And when you're playing Duolingo, well, when you're 
learning on Duol Duolingo, it is enforced from the beginning. You don't even know that there is a metronome, but you are being your your hits are precisely on point, and you really? only progress if you're on point, which okay. forces you timing and counting from the beginning. And my kids don't even know that that's what they did. They blew through the first like eight chapters, and I bought a piano for Christmas, and they directly went to the sheet music, which I just grabbed books from 1998 from my mom's house, and they started reading sheet music. That's that amazing. That is cool. And so. It's amazing. There's That's Duolingo a flex, for for music. For piano. I just paid like this. For yeah, the we super, have it because we're moving one. to Italy next year. My family and I. Really? And, oh, uh, oh and hot. North, North Como. Nice. We have some friends there with kids the same age, and so okay. that's going to be kind of nice. If you have nice. Coco and, co and Como, uh, Coco, <laughs> shit, Coco, there's a joke in there Coco somewhere. Melon. <laughs> Como Melon. <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's so, also Coco. the kid show. I'm talking about like the, the song. Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Yeah. 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 Down yeah. Down oh, down Coco, 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 Coco Mo. Coco yeah, Mo. and uh, what, what is uh, John Stamos was the drummer for the Beach Boys for that yeah. song. Yeah. He performs with them sometimes. He's been like longtime friends with them. So. Yeah. My yeah. sister lived in Turin for, for a few years. Oh, nice. So, I, yeah. so my only... Juve or Parma or whatever? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you played soccer. You don't know much else. I played soccer growing up in England and Australia, and I played cricket Where did you up. live in England? I lived in a place... <laughs> okay, so everyone listening who knows England is going to laugh at me now. Okay. I lived in Milton Keynes. My family is from Bath. Okay. England, so I know where that I is. I love Bath, and yeah. I, I still have... Desires to go and live in to bath. go and have a bath. Yeah, you go and have a bath. Now. No, I'm English. I don't have a bath. <laughs> yeah, what we do. Your teeth are great, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I would love to go and live in Bath. No, I I lived in Milton Keynes for about three years as an early teenager. We went there. Nice. nice. So you and I and Scott Hanselman, we went to Milton Keynes oh to wow. do a user the group meeting. The Computer Science Museum, right? Yeah, and we went to Bletchley Park. Oh, that's cool. Bletchley, Bletchley Park. Park. Yeah, we right. that. I remember that. Now, that's yeah. dope. Did sure. you bring a lot of salts to Bath? <laughs> no, because the water is naturally mineralized. You don't need to bring it. You don't even need it. You just touche. <laughs> wow. right? yeah. Don't drink it though. It tastes like ass. Oh. <laughs> How do you know what ass tastes like? That's inevitably the next me. question. He, he told, told me. me. You know what, Damien? This tastes like ass. Nice this redirection. This tastes like ass. I was like, what is ass oh, tastes like? explained it. Is there a specific so ass? Is it Serve Barbados a ass? Or is it Americanized no, ass? Like, it's know. that point. Is it Rihanna ass? Because that you might. Not enough of this whiskey guy drink for an ask question like that know. but you know it's cool. this might be a good time i know we're like well over and <laughs> yeah, i want to respect anything, your time and you want to tell people about aspire at the end here like i don't know like yeah messages. anything you want to pitch or whatever if they made it this far what, what do you want them to take away look if you i mean try out the dashboard if that's probably the first thing if you're not doing net already like grab the aspire dashboard point some hotel stuff at it and have a look at it like, that's the that's the way to yeah that sounds my main thing yeah. would be don't try to figure out what it is by reading the marketing material just, just use it, it. yeah okay Sick. Yep, that's good enough. That's a hot tip. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. I look forward to maybe doing this again. Love to. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, everyone else. Uh, if you liked it, here's my bullshit tagline of please subscribe or leave a review and or ciao. Bump, bump, bump. You got to do your bump bumps at the bump, end. Bump, bump, bump.